You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Got questions about your hound's health? Need the facts on Fido's fitness or food? You want to unleash your pup's potential? Well, you've come to the right place because it's time to win with dogs. Here, we learn how easy it is to naturally improve the lives of our furry friends. So sit, stay, and get ready to win with dogs. With me, Raquel Wynn. Hey listeners, welcome to Pet Life Radio. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Win With Dogs. Today I'm very excited to be speaking with another author, a fellow author, and her name is Brenda Bryan. She wrote a book called Barking Buddha Doga, and we know that like no other creature, dogs show us unconditional love, trust, faith, and present moment awareness, and according to Brenda, the author of Barking Buddha, Simple Soul Stretches for Yogi and Dogi, this is precisely precisely why your pup is the perfect com- complement to your yoga practice. So, I'm super excited to get some insight into this woman's approach to yoga. In 2006, she actually introduced Barking Buddha Doga to Seattle, Washington, and we're lucky enough to be able to put this in practice in our own homes by getting her book. So, hang tight. We're going to take a quick water break. We'll be right back to talk with Brenda Bryan. Don't go away. Hey, don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back to Win With Dogs right after this quick water break. Hey, ready to take a walk? Not just you, but the whole family. It's the 2009 Whisker Walk, Sunday, June 7th from 11 to 3 at the Lancaster Fairground in Lancaster, Massachusetts. Pet owners and animal lovers walk to lend a paw to benefit the animal shelters and pet charities they love. Come see exhibits, demonstrations, educational programs, special attractions, product giveaways, entertainment, auctions, raffles, food, fun, and things for adults and kids to see, do, and buy, both human and pet related. Whisker Walk 2009, a fun day for everyone. For more information, log on to whiskerwalk.org. When you're looking to add a pet into your life, consider adopting a homeless animal from your local shelter or rescue group. Whether you want a kitten, puppy, or a more mature pet, a purebred or a -a one-of-a-kind mixed breed, even a rabbit or hamster, your shelter has the best selection of animals anywhere, all screened for good health and behavior. PetLifeRadio.com presents Take Me Home with your host, Susan Daffron. Join us each week as we showcase wonderful pets, tell stories, and even throw some pet education into the mix. So get ready to find out why the pet adoption option can be a great way to add a furry companion into your life. Take me home every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Thanks for hanging around. We're back to Win With Dogs with me, Raquel Wynn, on Pet Life Radio. Welcome back to Win With Dogs. As I said earlier, we are talking about some doga. And I often get asked if my dog stretching book is like doga that's the first thing people say it's like oh i wrote a book about stretching oh you mean doga no not exactly my approach as everyone knows contains much more effort (laughs) unfortunately and at first i was skeptical about this book because i approach everything with effort i opened brenda's book and said aloud that dog isn't doing triangle poses just sitting there (laughs) well upon reading her book and then Knowing her philosophy, Brenda is a massage therapist and a yoga instructor. That's exactly the point of Barking Buddha Doga is letting your dog support you and help you achieve more connection with the divine. Is that true, Brenda? Tell me a little bit about Barking Buddha Doga and welcome to the show. Hi. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Raquel. Yes, that that is true. Um, the benefits of doing a doga class go deeper than just the 
the physical benefits. The word yoga means union and dogs are pack animals, so they are all about union. And union means discovering a deep connection to all things. So in yoga, yeah. Um, In yoga, we move toward union by first connecting to our dogs then connecting to that best part of ourselves, that divinity that you mentioned earlier, and then hopefully opening up to a connection to all things. I love this idea, Brenda, of learning something from our dogs, and I often say that my work with canines has taught me so much in my approach with humans and just the world, and one of the things Absolutely. that I always am amazed by is my need for effort. I'm so focused on effort, you know. I have a lot of energy. I like to feel movement. And it seems over the years I've meditated and I've worked on this physical need to move. And I think dogs have this too. So mm-hmm. my own yoga practice, I've really benefited from it. You know, I, my mind still wants to work hard. But dogs have this innate ability to feel the good vibes and just you know, absorb it and kind of get with the program quick. So when you take a dog to your yoga class, do you often have dogs that obviously they've never done anything like this? And, (laughs) you know, are are they open to it? Do they just kind of completely melt into it? Do they, I'm sure you get all different kinds. Tell me a little bit about. I do get all different kinds and that's so much fun (laughs) to experience all different breeds of dogs and um, sizes and temperaments, um, it's really interesting, Raquel, because there are some high-energy breeds that come in, and they're just going crazy at the beginning of class, but I would say all 95% of the time, a really high percentage of the dogs will mellow out by the end of class. They very much respond to the vibe. Also, just like people, they have, they get used to the practice. So by the second or third class, they're like, oh, there's that yoga mat or doga mat, as we call it, doga. And this means I get attention from my favorite human. Yeah, so they really I, like it. That's great. <laughs> and like, I love your book. And thank you for writing it so that we can do practice at home because I know you're in Seattle and you can't mm-hmm. be in all cities <laughs> offering these classes. But <laughs> In your book, you say, you know, the purpose of yoga, Buddha yoga, is not necessarily to have a send out dog, although you're just, as you're saying now, that can happen, but it's about it's focusing healthy. on connection and relationship with our dogs, encouraging our own self discovery. And I mean, dogs are so in the moment, they are so open. I never even thought of their own spirit just kind of you being able to be awashed in that and benefit. I never thought of that. So I was so blown away by this when I started reading it. I was thrilled. I want to talk a little bit about you break down the book in different areas of discovery and places to work on for people like gratitude, unconditional Mm -hmm. love, and perspective focus. And you give all different poses. And the gratitude, you know, dogs are natural healers we know this and your whole chapter of gratitude is on this natural healing and I mean have you experienced people in your yoga classes feeling like they just got way more out of yoga because their dog was there versus doing it on their own (laughs) I've I've had comments from people that um, they didn't understand it at first but after the class have a little bit more grasp on what it means. And the thing about yoga is we're spending that time just truly focusing on the relationship we have with our dog. And certainly our dogs are with us every day, but we aren't completely focusing on our relationship and just being with them and being present with them. So that's what yoga is all about. Yeah, and that's enough. And that is enough. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I often, it's always like, I'm working with dogs, I'm stretching them, moving them, and I get to the very end of my time with them when I'm working with clients and I'm connecting with them, just doing some hands-on stuff. That's when they are the most open, their breath slows, all of that yes. you know, starts happening when I quit trying. So your book has been great. I want to read another little segment of Brenna's book under Unconditional Love, and it's the Unconditional Love chapter. And it says, I've read that dogs don't enjoy being hugged because it's a sign of dominance. And I love that you go, hold on. There's another theory I have. And I I totally (laughs) resist these notions that 
dogs can't sleep in the bed with you. Don't make eye contact with your dog. Don't hug your dog. So your book is full of all kinds of myth busters, I think, in your, you know, hands-on approach to dogs. And, and, and you're saying dogs like to be interacting with you. Dogs love to yeah, be hugged. Yeah, especially pack members. And they're, um, as I said, their favorite person or their favorite people. I, they, I think they enjoy that closeness. I mean, how often do they jump up on the sofa and want to crawl in our laps, you know? <laughs> All the time. All the time. So you you started as a yoga instructor, and, or excuse me, a massage therapist, I think, and then uh-huh. started doing doing yoga. And how did your perspective change from doing yoga? What what made you want to bring yoga? Kind of as you say, you want to calm the world one dog at a time. I love that. Oh right, my motto: relaxing the world one dog at a time. <laughs> yes, that's fabulous. <laughs> I mean, yoga yoga is powerful and Mm -hmm. I'm curious to know what made you think of doing it with Gus and Honey, your dogs? Well, I was actually asked to develop the class by the director of the Seattle Humane Society after I met her doing massage on rescue dogs at an event. Mm -hmm. She asked me to develop the class and teach it at the shelter. So I did. Were you at first? (laughs) And that's how it started. Did you think, how in the world am I, what do you mean, I, do, I mean, I just am amazed that you, I guess you just... You know, I your- didn't think of that question until later. I said yes immediately and was really excited about it. And <laughs> as I tend to do, sometimes I get really excited about things and sort of jump in. And I thought, okay, now how am I going to do this? <laughs> yeah. It's like, I, I have so, no idea what you're talking about. I never jump in feet first. Ne- or no, you wouldn't know, first. would you? <laughs> <laughs> but you, so then you, and I guess essentially you had to let your dog, to pun, for pun, pun intended, be your co-pilot and kind of guide right. you along. I mean, did you have well, an... I, it, yes, I started by letting them on the mat and incorporating them into the poses. And my massage therapy background really came in handy here. Oh, I just made a pun without intending to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did. It and- really came in it really came in handy because I had the background to really know the body of the dog mm-hmm. and um, know the, the massage and the stretches. So it was pretty easy to do that from there. Yeah, if I'm a novice and I've never done yoga and I have a dog who's never been a dogi, I mean, is it relatively rewarding and, you know, simple to do for those people listening out there who've never embarked on, oh, sorry, I did it again, (laughs) who've never embarked, I can't think of another word right now, embarked on a yoga practice, it seems very approachable to me. And your book has, like, tons of poses in there. I mean, do you think it's pretty doable for the beginner? Well, I tried to make the book accessible to people who maybe don't have a yoga background. So that's why I, um, I also tried to compare yoga to traditional yoga philosophy. So people would have more of an understanding. Yeah, I love of, that. Um, yoga, love yoga that. principles, but maybe be more open to those principles because they're doing an activity with their dog. Does that make sense? Oh, totally. In fact, because I get I, people to come into my yoga classes that don't do regular yoga. They just come to yoga. But yeah. we're going down the path with our dogs instead of alone, and that's a lot more fun. And, <laughs> and I do think that softens people. And, you know, we Absolutely. are we are Western, and we mm-hmm. do have the science and the skeptic and that whole background. Mm-hmm. But I think what you offer here, I mean, seriously, Brenda, I'm reading your book, and I've read tons of books and I, I'm kind of like a sponge like you are just keeping up with what I can put in my tool belt and your book is so approachable easy to read I mean I love all of the little descriptions you have on all the different meditations she has 13 different themes for meditation there's 35 Hatha yoga poses I mean they're really great and I want to take a break for a second but Brenda when we get back I want to talk about some of the yoga principles and some stuff out there that people might not know, like what a mantra is or what a mudra is or, you know, what is important about the breath. And I'd love for you to shed some light on that for our listeners. But first, let's take a quick break. We will be right back in one sec. 
Hey, don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back to Win With Dogs right after this quick water break. Welcome to Pet Planet. Here's a copy of Pet Planet Magazine, Florida's most informative and fun pet resource magazine. It features heartwarming stories and informative articles from local and national pet experts. Excellent. Pet Planet Magazine offers Operation Planet Rescue, helping rescued pets find new homes. And it's available at 500 locations in South and Central Florida and 24-7 on the Internet at PetPlanetMagazine.com. If you're out and about with your pet, you may be featured in Paparazzi, Candid Pictures of You and Your Pet. For up-to-date pet-friendly events, activities, and pet-related services and products, Pet Planet Magazine is your final destination. I shall take this magazine home with me. Back to your home planet? No. To my condo in Boca. Pet Planet Magazine. Check them out at www.petplanetmagazine.com or 352-394-8578. It's out of this world. Coast to coast and around the world, it's all behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore, every week on demand. This is the place for a special paparazzi treat, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Thanks for hanging around. We're back to Win With Dogs with me, Raquel Wynn, on Pet Life Radio. Welcome back to Win With Dogs. We're talking with Brenda Bryan, yoga instructor, doga instructor, excuse me, and author of Barking <laughs> Buddha. <laughs> and just before the break, we were talking about her book, which she has it available. You can buy it on Amazon. You can go to BarkingBuddhaDoga.com. And um, she also has a, a blog spot you can go to. And all this is on our website. So make sure you look into it. But Brenda, I wanted to talk about, you know, the yoga philosophy. And when I'm reading your book, you're talking about the yoga philosophy and you know what it seems like dogs were made to embody this so it started making perfect sense to me like of course you have your dog in yoga class to teach you all all of these principles you know so what are some of the principles mainly I have been taught you know yoga is connecting as you say with the divine and what that Mm -hmm. means is seeking some kind of enlightenment and getting peace from our ego brain, as you say it, to lead with more of the spirit. And tell me a little bit about that. So tell the listeners a little bit about some of those principles and why you think the dogs embody that, which I totally agree. Yeah, sure. Um, Well, first, to achieve that connection and that connection to divinity within, whatever divine is to you Mm -hmm. or your listeners, we have to open our hearts. And the things that dogs do for us is they open our hearts. Right. People who are resistant to maybe um, having these deep feelings toward other humans are sometimes more easily able to have these feelings to, to their dogs. Yeah, so it's, it's almost... A, it's a very open, open-hearted open practice. <laughs> yeah, and dogs, like, they... You know, we all have what I call an intimacy cap, or actually what I learned mm-hmm. from my therapist is called... <laughs> <laughs> an intimacy cap. <laughs> and uh-huh. dogs seem to be able to lift this ceiling for us. And so once you get the heart center open, the heart chakra, mm-hmm. that's when we start seeing maybe the perspective shift and and such with dogs. What about um what about the unconditional love and just the faith and trust? That's a pretty heavy part of yoga, just backing off and letting things happen, if am I right? Absolutely, and we can learn those things from our dogs because, uh, well, for example, in this time of recession or even the pandemic, the swine flu, um, I think our dogs can help bring us back to the simple things in life. 
you know, when we're with them, they don't care about anything that's on the news. They just care about being with us and maybe going for a walk, going outside, getting in nature, playing, having a treat, just the simple things. And once we connect to that simplicity, we're able to still the fluctuations of the mind, if you will, and just breathe and relax. (laughs) And open up. And I think dogs do help us get to that place of openness, which leads to peace and enlightenment, if you will, which Mm -hmm. is what we're all seeking. And I... I'm just curious. This is kind of, well, sort of on the subject. Do you think dogs have different levels of enlightenment? I do. I mean, I think my Scotty, (laughs) no offense, Jake, (laughs) is a little more enlightened than my Bichon. And I don't know how to explain that, but I'm wondering if you think that, too. Well, I ha- this is uh, something I have actually been thinking about over the past few months if dogs are able to evolve spiritually. And yeah. I would have to say, yes. Um, it seems that, that my dogs, for example, since we've been working spiritually together, <laughs> they seem to be a little bit more connected to not only our yoga practice, but... Um, teaching and to other people and the students in the classroom. My little dog loves to go around and greet everyone. And he's the type of dog that if if someone is is a little grumpy, he'll go over there and pretty soon they soften up. And I believe they can evolve spiritually. I I do too. And you know, when I was reading, and you kind of touch on this in your book under the perspective chapter mm-hmm. of, about how you know you, you perceive the perfect dog class to be everyone bonding and silently sitting and enjoying practice and then of course you get the dogs that won't stop barking <laughs> in class. That doesn't happen and, very often but that did happen fortunately early in my yoga teaching career because it taught me a valuable lesson. <laughs> of course, of course, right when you needed it. But exactly. it made me think of this and, and I couldn't remember there was a Hindu spiritual leader or deity maybe who had a tiger that was vegetarian because this mm-hmm. tiger was so enlightened and I, I don't know if you know about that but I can't find that anywhere if anyone out there listening knows about the vegetarian tiger um, and evidently you know in the practice it was because this tiger was more enlightened and you know was vegetarian for some reason uh-huh. well, and not only that but because he didn't eat meat this is a totally branching off the subject but because he didn't eat meat (laughs) he was more kind of at peace and not as aggressive as an animal so so Mm -hmm. pretty interesting to think about some of these things you know right that also in your book one of my favorite things is the encouragement part and just how dogs are complete they're they are so encouraging never judging i'm curious to know if you have any humans that have really evolved in their yoga practice because their dogs kind of encouraged them and weren't judging. You know, they reinforced that ability to open up and explore without fear of reprimand, you know, or disgrace. Do you think dogs definitely help the humans along that line? Definitely. And it seems that a lot of the students that find their way into my yoga classes have experienced this kind of healing from their dogs. And they and they already have an understanding of the dog human connection. Yeah, I mean totally. So you give classes in the Seattle area. Yes, and I do uh, teacher trainings as well. I think my next one may be in the Atlanta area. I'm kind of firming that up. Cool. And I'll be doing some touring and some seminars and readings and such. So. If um, people check my website and blog, I try to keep everyone posted on that stuff that's coming up. Yeah, and that is all on the website, too, um, for those of you who are interested in finding out more about it. And so before we go, let's talk just specifically. You've got some Hatha yoga poses in, in the book that have great pictures so you can practice it. And I'm just curious if you could... What are some, maybe a couple of your favorite poses? Can you talk anyone through it listening? Can you give a couple poses that someone could do right now listening with their dog? Well, puppy child's pose is a a fairly easy pose to get into. So if you were to be on your knees, 
mm-hmm. you would bring your your sit bones or your butt for those people who aren't familiar with yogic terms your, your butt bootay. down to your heels your bootay, bootay <laughs> and then just fold forward at the hips and maybe if your dog is lying down bring your heart closer to your dog and uh-huh. in puppy child's pose and it's a sweet pose because you're just kind of hugging your dog like they're a little or a big pillow depending on the size of your dog but so that's a very yeah. basic and easy pose I love that <laughs> pose and it's a heart opener pose and you know the dogs I wonder if they respond just like we do I well I think they do when I work with dogs and I do I have like a chest opener pose in my book mm-hmm. and I swear you can see their eyes start softening and their breath mm-hmm. soften and I mean it's fabulous I I, one of my old podcasts, um, I spoke specifically about the breath, and yoga is very intimately connected with the breath. And I feel that dogs really pick up on our breath when we are working with them. Like if I'm doing massage on oh, a dog, yes. I make sure to do that. So the breath, you know, do dogs experience? I mean, do some dogs come in with rapid, rapid, rapid breathing, you know, hyper dogs? I mean, I bet oh, their breath sure, is Sure, sure, they're panting, too. especially the, the new ones, because it's a new experience. They're around dogs they don't know. They're around people they don't know. They're like, what is this yoga mat? Where am I? What's going on? So it's new to them. So they could be a little nervous at first. Some are, not all, but some are. <laughs> and and so the perfectly natural. And if my dog is nervous or if the listener's dog's nervous doing these poses does it affect the dog if the human you know if they kind of calm their breath what are some things and even some mantras a what is a mantra and b maybe give Um. some (laughs) that help people calm themselves and therefore their dogs down when they're working mantra i love this word tell them what it is (laughs) mantra well, well. first of all, to answer the first question, I, I think I mentioned this in my book. I always mention it in my classes, but as we all know, all, all us dog people know that dogs really do respond to our breath and our energy. So reminding people to breathe deeply and keep their face relaxed because dogs are keen observers. And if yes. your touch and your breath and your face is tense, they notice. You're a proponent of smiling yoga. <laughs> do your yoga. I have a. I had a yoga teacher once say, "Okay, now add a smile. You should do all your poses with a smile, even even like the uh, the hard, tough ones." But yeah, it said dogs are watching you. They're observing your breath. Right. So slowing the breath and calming the face, relaxing the jaw, that helps. What about mm-hmm. mantras? Okay, well, a mantra is uh, from Sanskrit, an ancient East Indian language, and it literally means mind protector. And it's a word or a phrase that we repeat over and over again to focus the mind and prevent our thoughts from wandering away from our intention. Probably one of the most famous yogic mantras is the word OM, O-M. Which means amen, and it was the first (laughs) sound the earth created when the earth was born. It's great. It's a fabulous, calming word. The sound of the absolute. And you know what? Dogs love the sound of OM. Yeah. Who doesn't? <laughs> I think it's Come similar on. to a sound that they would make. <laughs> Who doesn't? I swear. So mantras are mind protectors. So am I saying if I'm doing this yoga, am I saying these mantras out loud or can I just intend them? Can I think them? Is that effective as well? You can do either. Um, in a classroom, I always have people just say them to themselves, not out loud. But I think if you're alone, you can do whatever the heck you want. Yeah. <laughs> out loud or silent or whatever works. <laughs> Does that mean yoga in your birthday suit? <laughs> if you want, the dog won't notice. You know, I hear me. that they do that. Yeah, I'm sure. I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> well, fur feels much better on a bare skin. Let's face it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. So, yeah, I love mantras are so powerful. And along those lines, you know, I think we can learn how nonverbal dogs are, which means, you know, let's say you're intending this mantra. You're not saying it out loud. And the dog mm-hmm. responds. That's just proof that. We don't end where our skin ends. We are these energetic, connected beings. And that's what I really love about your book. I tend to think 
of everything, like I was saying before, in movement, my background as an athlete and a trainer, and then mm-hmm. in massage. I tend to think of everything as effort and movement when it comes to the body. So it's so refreshing to have this book remind you of just how simple it is and how beneficial it is to just be and be with our dogs and connect. So I really I thank you for writing this. And where else can people... Thank you. You're welcome. Where else can people find information? Did I give all the websites out? Let's see. I, I think I... I believe you did. www.barkingbuddha.com is my website. And, and the book is in stock on Amazon right now. I just noticed that yesterday, and I had that kind of first day of school feeling a little nervous, a little excited. <laughs> yes, and you, and now it's up there. So is this your first book? It is my first book, and I kind of have the second one bubbling up. I'm beginning to align for it, and... Oh, cool. But I feel like How, I need to get this. I feel like I need to get this baby sort of hatched and out in the world, and then I'll focus on the next project. <laughs> yeah, compl- How long did it take you to write this one? How long did you work on it? Well, I started it right after I started the class at the Seattle Humane Society, mm-hmm. and I worked on it through the summer, and then I put it away for about six months. It almost had to ruminate a little. Yeah. And then I brought it out again in the spring, and I wrote a book proposal. And I sent it yeah. to a local publisher, and they liked it. That's so great. So the whole process was uh, kind of organic and just sort of, I don't want to say easy. I've worked hard, but meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's only meant and to I'm, be. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It is what you want it to be, and we can all have our lives exactly as we want, which probably explains why my book writing process was a three-and-a-half-year tedious experience full of effort. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see if I can uh, learn some from my dog, practice a little doga, and approach the next one possibly a little differently. <laughs> yes, you'll have to keep me posted. <laughs> I will indeed. And Brenda, thank you for being a guest with me today on Win with Dogs. And um, well, thank I really. You. You're welcome. I love what you're doing. And for those of you who have never done yoga, get this book. There are pictures in it. Your dog will love it. Let your dog be your inspiration to get healthy and get on the path to health, as I always say. Um, I think I have to give me. a shout out to Bev yeah? Sparks, photographer. She's oh, awesome. Oh, yes. She Sorry, Bev. Job. Bev, she did do great stuff. And she's actually <laughs> done lots of dog photos. She's pretty. She has. She's pretty known. So, yeah, for the photos, too. (laughs) Thank you for being with me. And I want to leave in closing with a quote from your book by Edward Hoagland. And it's, in order to really enjoy a dog, he says, one doesn't merely try to train him to be semi-human. The point of it is to open oneself to the possibility of becoming partly a dog. And on that note, (laughs) if you want to win in life and win with dogs, then you let your dog be your co-pilot. Thank you, Mark, for helping me sound good. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, Brenda, for being with me today. And Thank you. Every- you're welcome, and have a wonderful day, listeners. And remember to go win with dogs. Exercise, nutrition, interaction, and love make for one healthy, happy hound. Give yourself the gift of knowledge on demand every week right here at Pet Life Radio with me, Raquel Wynn, and Win with Dogs.